Did you know that next week is the first official day of spring? My mind is just blown by that, and yours might be too. And in honor of that, this week we are going to talk about spring and today specifically about clean getting our chore systems. But guess what? I've got a special going on for you right now in honor of the impending here spring season coming upon us. And that is that the tidy home is on sale this week. You can get 25% off between right now, this moment you're listening to this, until this Friday, March 15th of 2024. 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the sale will end, but you can save 25% when you enter the coupon code SPRINGCLEAN. Yep, you heard that right, SPRINGCLEAN. We are going to work today on getting your house in spiffy shape and getting a system all set up. It's going to carry you through way beyond spring cleaning because you know what? I like spring cleaning, but there is so much pressure that is put upon us as homemakers that we have to do all of this at spring. But guess what? If we can maintain our homes during the year, it doesn't have to be a crazy, insane time of the year or this pressure of having feeling like we have to dust every single inch of our house. We can get it under order and in order throughout the year. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And I'm excited for you to implement this system. And even more so, if you want to join the Tidy Home, this is the week to do so. Welcome to Little by Little Homeschool Podcast, where you'll learn tips and strategies that will empower you to home educate your children. I'm Lee Nguyen, a homeschool mom of over 12 years, which includes two graduates. When I started homeschooling, I was pretty much on my own and was desperate for encouragement and help. My mission is to be a source of encouragement and help to you. Whether you are just beginning your homeschool journey or you're deep into the homeschool lifestyle, Little by Little Homeschool wants to help you stay the course because all the time you are investing into your children is completely worth it. If you're ready to take your homeschool to new levels, keep listening. During the homeschool year, it is normal and it is unfortunately inevitable to feel overwhelmed by all your duties. Motherhood, homeschool, wife, homemaker, and we can go on and on. But guess what? You can't do it all full throttle all the time. But what if we could take just one thing off of your mind today? We're going to create that simple system to keep up with your chores today, to take that off of your mind. It doesn't mean that the chores don't get done. It means that you don't have to think about it. It is on autopilot. You don't have to fret. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to write out endless to-do lists that don't get done. Have you had moments of looking at the things around your house that need to be done and just not getting to it? Whether it's because you're busy with more important things or you just easily get distracted at that moment by something else and it just doesn't happen. And you look later on, you're like, oh, I was going to do that. And then you forget about it or move on to something else. And oh, I was going to get to that. No matter the size of your home or the size of your family, it can be a struggle to keep up with it all. And it's also something that can push mom over the edge. Once in a while, I still get that little deja vu twinge to the time before having a chore system. And when I get that feeling, I get that moment of just panicky feeling and that just comes. And I'm so glad that that is not the norm anymore because it was the norm for me for so many years. And like I said, I still get that feeling sometimes and I feel like, oh, and I got to talk myself down and say, it's okay, girl. You, you can ignore that that closet is a mess or you can ignore whatever it is it needs to be mopped for right now because I am so thankful that I have a system that I have shared in the tidy home for you as well and because it just takes the stress off of me. And that's what I want to do for you today is to take the stress off of you, take those endless to-do lists, and we're going to put it onto autopilot. And every day, Every week, every month, every season and quarter and every year, it's just is like a rinse and repeat. You just do the thing and then you move on to the next thing you have in life. And then you just do the next cleaning and it's just, we'll put it onto autopilot. And that's what I want to do for you. So today I'm going to share with you some steps to do that. So I want to grab a pen and a paper right now. The first step in creating your simple chore system, and I put the title simple because it really can be simple. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. And it doesn't have to be super complicated. This is going to sound so simple that you're going to say, why didn't I think of that? Well, you don't have to think about it. I already thought about it and I'm going to share it here with you so that you then don't really have to think about it. We're going to think about it today and then you can just continue to do it. Again, like I said, autopilot. 
The first thing is to look realistically at all that needs to happen in and outside of your home each day, each week, each month, each quarter, and we'll say yearly. And you're going to write down each of those tasks on a piece of paper. It might take you a couple of pieces of paper, and this might take you a couple of days. I actually would encourage you to take more than just a five minute sitting there and doing it, or even more than a 30 minute break that you might have in your day writing it down. You can do that. Suggest I suggest starting off with just a brainstorm, brain dump. Just write down all the things. You could just even pop around from room to room and look in each room and write down what are the different chores and tasks that you would like done in each of those rooms. I also encourage you to take a look outside. See what needs to be done out there. Do you have a shed that needs to be cleaned out? Do you have a garage that needs to be cleaned out? Do you have flower gardens or a vegetable garden or lots of lawn that needs to be mowed? Take a look outside too and just write it all down. It will look overwhelming at first. We're not focused on that at all, just writing it all down. And if this feels too overwhelming in the tiny home, I have all of those chores. Every possible one you can think of is written down. And you just simply have to choose which ones need to happen in your home. So just looking realistically at like, what what do I want to have done? And also when I say realistically, I mean realistically. If you are in a season of life where you're saying, you know what? I would like the bathrooms cleaned and the floors swept up a little bit and once in a while maybe a spot mopping and that's what I can handle right now, then that is your realisticness. If your kids are older and they can help out more, you can add in more chores. We're also looking at just right now, this season of your life, the season of life I'm in. I can do maybe more chores than I did before. However, I'm a little bit in that season of life where a lot of it falls on my shoulders and I don't have my kids all around to help out as much. But you know what? The balance to that is that I don't have three little kids home with me 24-7 making as much of a mess. Okay, so first step to creating your simple system is to look realistically at all that you need to get done, all that you want to get done. Don't worry about how often these chores need to get done. Just write them down. They're just going to be in one, one big piece of paper or like I said, maybe a couple pieces of paper. The second one is to, second step is to divide that list into different categories. Figure out which ones you want to get done daily. So something like a chore of feed the dog. Well, obviously that happens daily. Might even happen multiple times a day. You're not going to put that into a category the same as maybe dusting your bedroom because those happen at two completely different frequencies. So we're looking at what do you want to happen and what needs to happen every single day. That is going to be one list and you're going to operate from that list every single day. This list is not just a list for you. It is a list for the entire family. What in the house needs to happen every single day? Then divide that list into monthly. What tasks would I like to get done every single month? Just like I mentioned earlier, you're not going to put feeding the dog on there or feeding the cat or feeding the fish. You are going to put items that are okay getting done once a month. For me, once a month, something like cleaning the bathroom, that's not once a month. That actually happens a couple times a week. Once or twice a week happens for me. So you're not going to put that in the monthly. It is just going to be what would I like to get done monthly. So that could be a dusting of the bedroom. So I'd say that is good enough for me to get done monthly. So we're really looking at what am I okay with getting done monthly? So we're going to put that into one list. So we have a daily list and we have a monthly list. And there's going to be those chores that you would like to get done quarterly. Maybe You are a little fussy about the cleaning of your ceiling fans, and you'd like them to get done quarterly. I also like to call it seasonally. That kind of helps me a little bit of thinking in terms of spring, summer, fall, and winter. So I could say to myself, I want to, one of mine for some, well, maybe not seasonally, is two seasons. I will wash the slipcovers of my two couches, and I do that in the spring and in the fall. So that could be two quarterlies that I get done. And I think of it in terms of springtime. It really helps me to think of those in the month like that, as opposed to thinking in a business quarter. So you can think of business quarter if you want, or you can think of it in terms of the seasons. And then there's going to be tasks that you just want to get done yearly. Maybe that has to do with cleaning out the garage or cleaning out the shed or cleaning the basement or cleaning the attic, or it could be something like cleaning out the vegetable garden, because that would happen once a year at the end of your harvest season. So the second step is to divide that list into daily, monthly, quarterly, and yearly tasks. That's it right there. When you break it down, 
you're going to be like, wow, okay, that's really all I have to do every day. That's all I have to get done each month when it feels like it is so much that you have to do. Now, let's talk about each month. You're going to look at that and you're going to say, that's a long list possibly of things that I need to get done all of this month. And it might be a long list. What if you took that monthly list and you divided it into four lists? First list, you get done on week one. Week two, you do the second list. Week three, you do the third list. And week four, you do the fourth list. That way, you know what's going to happen each week. You take a look and you say, okay, I am entering week one right now. Let's take a look at that list. And these are the chores that I want to get done this week. And it, again, it doesn't mean that you have to do all of these. You are also pulling in your kids and your husband. Anybody who's living at home can pitch in with these chores. Now you have your daily chores and you have your monthly chores, but sometimes there are some chores in between there that you say to yourself, I can't wait a whole month, for example, cleaning the bathroom. I can't wait a whole month to clean the bathroom, but I don't want to clean it every day. That's where a weekly list will come into play. Some of the things you might want to include in a weekly list are things like cleaning the bathroom, maybe vacuuming, maybe cleaning out and giving the kitchen sink a good scrubbing. Maybe it is watering your plants. Maybe it is changing the litter box uh, for the cat. I don't know. I don't have a cat. So maybe that's too much or too little. If that's too too little, then, then ignore that comment. <laughs> but just what do you want to accomplish each week in order to maintain a level of cleanliness, knowing that the chores that you will do monthly will probably take things a little bit deeper. Deeper. So one, some of mine that are monthly would be something like to clean my kitchen shelves. We removed all of the upper cabinets in our kitchen, and so it is all open shelving with all of my ingredients, and it needs to be dusted. And so I do that just once a month. That's plenty. I take everything down, dust down the shelves, clean all the jars. To me, it's worth it. The before was not really working well for us, and I just think it's fun to have it open. So if you're on Instagram, you might have seen some pictures. But that's one of the things that is on my monthly. Now, if I spill something on the on the count on the shelves while I am cooking or baking, I'll obviously clean that up. I don't say to myself, oh, well, when I get to week three, I'll clean that up. No, we clean up as we go along with things like that. Maybe weekly, you might have little kids who are spilling things off and you might say, you know what, I'd like to give the kitchen and dining room floor a really good mopping once a week. So you're going to put that on your weekly list. Now let's jump to the next step in creating your system. And that is to look at the quarterly or slash seasonal tasks that you want to do. What do you want to get done every couple of months? As I mentioned, some of mine is like clean the slip covers. I also have things like clean out the shed or clean out the garage and things like the shed I will do in the spring because I know over the winter we just were throwing things in there and I'll give it a good clean out in the spring so we're set for the summer. And then the fall, I'll go ahead and clean out the shed again and get it all set up for the winter, pull things out, snowblowers, shovels, all those kinds of things that we will need for the winter. And when I say I, this isn't just I. This is this is people in my house as well helping out because guess what? Most of the stuff that's probably thrown in the shed is a contribution of the entire family. But then there's items that you're like, I just want to do yearly. And that might be something like clean out the basement or clean out the attic or just some type of task that you're just saying, I don't need to do that often. Once a year is perfectly enough. And now that you have your list, do you know what you need to do? You just need to do it. You need to just start doing it. You can start today. You can start tomorrow. But like I said, maybe you want to wait a little bit and brain dump on all of those. But once you have it set, you can go ahead and get started. And the moms, when you join the tidy home, everything is all laid out for you. You don't have to come up with any lists. You don't have to come up with any pretty lists of how it's going to look and hanging it on your refrigerator or having it out somewhere. I'm going to explain all of that to you and provide all of those resources so that all you have to do is sit there and just quickly write it out and figure out your exact system for your family. So I've taken out all of the guesswork. I've taken out all of the extra time that it will take for you. And all of that is right there for you in the tidy home, which you can easily join even just today at littlebylittlehomeschool.com backslash tidy home. There is even a drop down in the menu that says tidy home. The last thing that I want to mention to you here is that I've, well, I mentioned a little bit, I really just want to hone in on this point, is that you have to enlist your family. Everyone has to help. It is non-negotiable. We all live in the home. We all want the home to function well. And you, as the mom, you need help. 
If you are trying to do it all alone, you are burning yourself out. You might be burned out right now, and I don't want you to be burned out. Everybody can help. And remember that there are seasons in life where some things are going to be more important than other things, and that's okay. We're not going to compare to what Sally is doing down the road with her house or what Mary up the road is doing with her house. You need to focus in on your house and your specific family's needs right now, but everybody has to help. It's non-negotiable. You guys are a family unit. You are working together. And the fact that kids get to help out and be home and being homeschooled and help out, when they launch out into the world, they are going to know how to maintain a home, whether that has to do with maybe some doing something more than just chores, and that's building projects and taking care of a home and maintenance. But they're going to know, how often should I change the sheets on my bed? How do I wash dishes? How often do I need to vacuum? When do I need to do all of these different chores and how to do them? You are setting them up for success for when they branch out, when they launch and they either get their first apartment or that they get married and they have a home. They are going to know how to do all of this because you have taught them. And it is your job then to teach them, though. Instead of you just taking it all on yourself, you're actually hindering them from being able to be successful in their home management someday when they are older. And if you're feeling stuck and struggling with this, I highly encourage you to get into the tidy home this week. Remember, you can save 25% by using coupon code SPRINGCLEAN and you can go over to littlebylittlehomeschool.com backslash tidy home. The link will also be in the show notes or you can just go by to littlebylittlehomeschool.com and check out in the menu tidy home and be able to jump in today. However, this ends just, you have five days, that's it. And then, well, you can continue to get in, obviously. But if you want to get in during the sale, because I know that you love a good deal, you're going to want to do that before this Friday, March 15th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you have any questions about the Tidy Home, please feel free to email me or send me a message on social media. I would be very glad to answer that. But I'm mostly excited for you as we head into spring and all of this we see on Pinterest and we see on social media about having to get all of the spring cleaning done. I'm not concerned. I'm not overwhelmed about spring cleaning because guess what? I've been keeping up with my chore management system all year long. Spring cleaning? Eh, it's not a big worry for me. I'm not saying to myself next week that I have extra things I need to do because I have it in a rotation. I know that I will get those maybe extra things done that we want to do in the spring because it's already written on my list. I don't have to stress. I don't have to worry. And that is my hope and my goal for you in the tiny home. All right, friend, I'm excited to see you over there. Have a great day and go ahead and go start working on your list to take the stress off of yourself. Thank you for listening, friend. I'd love to connect with you more. You can find social media links in the show notes and share this episode with a friend who could use a boost to her homeschool. See you back here real soon.